Hello again. Hello, it's me, that divination witch. I'm here with a, a book haul, which isn't my usual content, but hey ho, I feel I need to share this with you because you guys always ask me for book recommendations. So this is some new ones I've gotten. So they may help you. You never know. Uh, without further ado, I just want to say welcome. If you're new here, stick around. You may like it. It's my witchy safe space. No question, you've got a silly question. And what I do on this channel is answer people's questions and try and help as best I can. So let's get into it. And if you don't know who I am, just to say my name's Sarah and welcome. I hope you do stick around, hit subscribe. I do talk about witchcraft, paganism, all that good stuff, but in a down to earth sort of way and just try and be normal, whatever that means. And I've also got a link tree just below. If you're interested in getting a reading from me, I've got an Etsy and a Patreon. Uh, so yeah, I'd be grateful if you could check it out. Thank you. So yes, a time of filming, like literally these have just came. I've just ripped the box open. I got a few books from Amazon. So I'm going to try and do this one handed because I am holding the microphone. Right, I've had to just rip the lid off the box. Uh, you can't even see, can you? Can you see? Can you see? Yeah, it does exist. It does. Uh, it's not going to be me ripping up packaging. Isn't, I'm just going to show you what books I've been getting. Here we go. They may be helpful to you too. First book I think will be helpful to a lot of you. It is Uncrossing by Con Contrina, what? Katrina Rasbold. So this is all about how to cleanse, how to know if you've been hexed or cursed or even got the evil eye on you or whatever. I think this will be very helpful. I know some techniques, uh, of course, but, you know, knowing more is always helpful. So if I can get anything out of that book, it's a bonus. That's why I got it. Poison Path Herbal. So I know a lot about herbs but not always their baneful properties and I'm not out there hexing people I don't do that willy-nilly Hecate would have my life for that not, not literally but you know she is a goddess of justice as well as witchcraft and uh yeah she wouldn't let that fly if I was doing that unjustifiably but baneful isn't always for hexes and curses protections are good to have baneful ingredients protective wards so that's why I got it just for some research purposes next entering Hecate's cave a lot of you have probably read this already I haven't so I have it now <laughs> uh, yeah I'll, I'll try and give you a mini review maybe at some point on that but there we go another Hecate book Next is this, Astrology Magic. Now this <clears throat> person, Lindsay Squire, I saw that they had other books out and it is aimed for beginners. And when it comes to astrology, that's not my strong suit. It isn't. So yeah, I just, I needed a beginner's guide. Oh, it's got some tarot spreads in there as well. That's interesting. Yeah, I needed this. I just, I felt drawn to it. I felt like... It might help me understand a bit more astrology stuff. If anyone out there has recommendations for, you know, things like your birth chart, understanding a bit more. I mean, I know the basics, but I'm not big on it. So I would like to know more. Let me know if you've got recommendations. That's, that's what I got there. The next, paranormal stories. This might not be everyone's cup of tea. But I like to uh, read up on some spooky, scary stuff sometimes. Uh, I've done a couple of videos about like creepy things and I'm going to maybe do some more. Uh, it's been a long time since I've covered it. it. It's in my playlist, Witch Talks Creepy Stuff. That's what I called it. Uh, I just I, I just haven't had time to, to talk about creepy stuff. <laughs> I want to talk about creepy stuff. So yeah, I got that. It's... Uh, Unexplained mysteries from around the world. So it's a worldwide thing, that one. The Cosmic Serpent. So, let's have a look. 
all oh, right, I thought for a moment, I thought, it's not what I thought, but it is what I thought. I thought it was a fiction book then, but no, it's not. So this is very historical. Uh, let's just, I'm just scanning over it. All right, it's just offering different mythological, historical perspectives on, I suppose, the origin of life and DNA. And basically at the moment, I mean, all the time I'm researching, but I'm very much researching ancient Mesopotamia and into the you know, Babylonian stuff and Abrahamic stuff. I'm trying to debunk it all in my head, <laughs> you know, get my head around it, like angels, demons, the watchers, the Anunnaki even, you know, I know some of it's conspiracy theory territory, but <clears throat> ancient, ancient, ancient religions, the serpent was uh, a symbol of fertility, a symbol of healing. I mean, that's why, you know, if you look at the hospital sign, which is from Hermes's staff uh it's about healing uh and it was demonized a lot of things that are true per se were demonized with the rise of christianity so i'm trying to get to the bottom of things so i think that would be a good one i just saw on the front it's been on my wish list for a while and i just saw all right makes sense dna is like a serpent and well it's going to be a hard read and all that but that's why i got it to satisfy my curious mind I also got to satisfy my curious mind. You can't really see, but this is right. There's his mugshot, <laughs> Alistair Crowley. He's a controversial figure, but this is his teachings of Th Thelma. Uh, yeah, the holy books of Thelma. I, I'm just researching. I'm not saying I believe everything Crowley believes. Crowley is a controversial figure. Uh, maybe I'll speak about him at some point. He was an occultist, a bit nutty, if you ask me. I mean, look, he went a bit cuckoo, in my opinion. But he did do a lot for the occult community. If, you can't deny that. Uh, he he just delved into things with two feet. And he came up with his own religion, long story short. And I just want to know what the heck it's all about, really. Uh, I'm just researching. That's what that is. I haven't heard anyone else mention. I saw it and I was like, oh my God, I need to try it. Now this might be very left hand, left hand, what? Left hand path for some of you. Well, I want to know what the heck this is about. It might be crap, but I thought I'll, I'll take a chance. 13 gates to the realms of the dark goddess. Whatever that means. Uh, I think it's going to be interesting. Uh, it's a spiritual path, what I, I'm taking from it. So at the moment, part of my research, I'm researching the Klefoth the and the Sephiroth and Jewish mysticism. And like I say, these ancient religions, you know, my head's very in that at the moment. And when I saw that, I thought, oh, there's a path to do with the dark goddess. What's this about? Is it something someone modern's made up? Is it rooted in ancient things? I don't know. I just got it to check and if it's any good I'll share it with you guys. I got this very close to home because I want to talk more about where I'm from and yeah I'm doxing myself so what. Haunted Sunderland. So I live in a city in the northeast of England called Sunderland. Yay we love Sunderland. <laughs> uh, I'm not originally from Sunderland. I'm originally from County Durham. <clears throat> Uh, if you if you if you're from around here, you may know uh, Sunderland and Newcastle have a big rivalry. Uh, but yeah, the northeast we have a lot of history. We have a lot of spooky things. I did a ghost hunt on here, but I took the the video down because the person I did it with we we are no longer friends. So I just I might have to do it again. But even in the city of Sunderland, there's this uh, well known legend of the Hilton Castle and the Card Lad. Uh, this ghost that haunts it and basically we met him <laughs> long story short so I just like to talk more about it also we have uh, quite a few local myths and legends like the lambda worm uh, which is like a, a serpent myth and I want to talk more about stuff like this I've already got books on it and yeah I just like local things you know and you're, you're waiting yeah on a spiritual journey it's good to be connecting with your heritage, with the local area, local spirits, myths and legends, histories. It's interesting. If you are on 
uh, an angelic path or even left hand path or you want to know more about the reality of angels get this because angels aren't all love and light angels can f you up as well and i'm learning more about them it's not just demons i'm learning about angels too and i heard that this was amazing i've got some other good reference books on angels but i heard that this was a really good one to get a dick a, a, a will <laughs> a dictionary of angels bloody hell as if i've just went a dick <laughs> <laughs> then the other side <laughs> uh this is a historical grimoire i cannot say that for the life of me some some more diraki demonium uh the false monarchy of demons so you know i'm i'm learning more about the left hand path that's all it's a historical text reprinted i want to read it i want to know more and then again this <clears throat> is linked with Alistair Crowley too. A historical, I suppose. The Emerald Tablets of Thoth. Apparently, from what I know, um, I'm a novice with this, but from what I know, these tablets were found and it's a bit of a conspiracy theory. It's something uh, that is in the, the religion of Crowley as well. Uh, I'll just read a bit of the back so you get what I mean. So the Emerald Tablet of Thoth, the Atlantean, is a book that is believed to contain widgen, widgens, what? <laughs> wisdoms and teachings of the ancient Egyptian god Thoth. The book is said to be written by Thoth himself and was discovered by Maurice Sturiel, an American esotericist and spiritual leader in a cave in the Grand Canyon. So it's a, it's a kind of conspiracy theory here. Uh, but I just, I'm interested. It doesn't mean I fully believe it. <laughs> Widgeons next. I got Curse Be Gone. Again, a bit like that on Crossing book. It's good to be protected. So I need more protections lately. I have had, I'll be upfront and honest, I've had some psychic attacks against me. And uh, I'm busy enough. I can't be asked. Psychic attacks. <clears throat> I'll do a video about it at some point. It's not always from witches. It's not always someone sitting down to do a spell on you. It's the evil eye, it's jealousy, it's bad mouthing, it's nastiness. And when you are a content creator, you're putting yourself out there to that. So I, I need I need more ways of protecting. This is the last book, but I've got something else. Uh, so this I got because it seems interesting. Because as you guys know, if you're not new here, I am working on my uh, ancestral path as well connecting more with the Norse those are my ancestors now as I'm connecting with the Norse okay this is a little UPG but it's something that happened to me so Queen Hell Lady Hell statues behind me uh, has been helping me and like I've said in this video I have been researching the Sephiroth the Cliffoth and that's the tree of life for those who don't know and the tree of life is found or the tree of knowledge found in like every religion every mythology every history there's the tree and it represents the universe it represents source it represents enlightenment and <clears throat> i'm helping my friend actually my friend and she's helping me learn as well while she's doing it she's actually going through the sephiroth right now uh and i am learning while she does that too <laughs> you know and I'm, I'm genuinely interested myself but i feel like in occultism a lot of people just say oh it's, it's this like everything's based in Jewish and Hebrew and those things where the tree of life's found everywhere now Queen Hell herself when I was astral projecting uh, this is a while back I'm sure she doesn't mind me sharing this bit she took me to Helheim which is her realm and it's not like Christian Hell it's very cold actually imagine game of thrones uh you know the wall at game of thrones where it's so snowy and there's a big massive ice wall it was like that kind of landscape and she took me there and there was a big wall that we went through and on the other side of the wall was the tree and it was the biggest tree i've ever seen and she explained to me that that's yidrasil now yidrasil is the tree found in norse myth as well uh, and it connects it's the tree, like I said, the tree of life, knowledge, and it connects all the different realms, Midgard, Asgard, 
uh, Jot Jotunheim, like all the different realms, okay, is connected to the tree. But that's symbolic because we are all connected to the tree. The tree is the universe. If you look at, you know, representations of the universe, like this big spider web thing, it's like a tree and its branches branching out. And we are all little twigs on that tree. And all of our past lives and our souls and everything, like it's all little tree twigs, twigs on the tree. <laughs> What's up with me and tongue twisting today? <laughs> Anyways, yes, Yggdrasil <clears throat> is the Norse tree. And <clears throat> it looks a bit like the tree of life there, doesn't it? So I want to know because I feel like I'm not drawn to do the Sephiroth myself. There's something in it that I'm like, it's it's Jewish, it's Hebrew, it's it's... I'm, I'm not drawn to that but this is my ancestors and well when I saw it I thought has someone figured out how to uh, kind of do this with the Norse you know because it's universal really but all the information we've got on the Kabbalah really are, are on the Jewish teachings oh, uh, and so yeah I got it basically <clears throat> so I might, I might end up doing that I might not I don't know I just want to learn and then the final thing this tarot deck I got, I have the original version and I was like, fuck it, I'm getting this one finally. It is Ethereal Visions Tarot, oh, the lunar version, where there's more uh, representation, let's say, in the artwork. Uh, but the lunar version, see, the, the normal version, I've got the original, it's golden and the shininess on the cards are golden. <laughs> this is silver from what, what I'm understanding anyways, I haven't opened it yet. Uh, let's open it. I'm trying to do this one-handed. I wanted to show you guys what I meant. So it's in plastic again inside, but I have opened it <laughs> one-handed. I'm balancing it. Yeah, so I've opened it, okay. I'll get the guidebook. So, talking in the mic, the guidebook, it's this beautiful Art Nouveau style. And it's in plastic still. So I'll just show you the front one, the fool. So it's silver this time. And some of the cards have different variation, different backs, if you've got the original. So the original is well worn. I've got it and it's, I, I've, I've really like, I've done so many readings with it. It's, it's a bit scuffed and stuff. And yeah, I used to use it all the time. I still get drawn to it because out of all the tarot decks I've got, it's the most friendly one that like every spirit seems to love, whether they're an angel, a demon, a deity, an ancestor, a spirit guide, all spirits seem to just be drawn to it. And, and it's like friendly artwork, you know, I, I can't explain it. So yeah, I thought I'll, I'll get that one as well since the other one's getting a bit worn. Uh, I'll still use it forever <laughs> until it's like, a scrap of paper uh but yeah that's what i got like i needed another tarot deck because i've got bloody loads maybe one day i'll show you them all <laughs> i'll be a bit ashamed like oh my god i've got so many uh but yeah there you go there's a haul video i hope it helps someone out there maybe you got some ideas for books uh yeah that's what i do sometimes listen to other people's recommendations so hopefully uh i haven't steered you wrong you know until next time, stay safe, stay witchy, and I forgot to say, you know, any questions, let me know. So, yeah, stay safe, stay witchy. Bye.